around 60 leading scientists gathered with 20 Nobel laureates to discuss the climate change crisis and strategies to overcome it. They were addressed by Britain's Prince of Wales, a leading environmental campaigner who spoke of the importance of December's Copenhagen summit called COP15 to agree on solutions. They will have to identify both what needs to be done uh, and how it can be achieved, even against a background of considerable, to say the least, economic difficulty. I believe that a memorandum drawing uh, together the wisdom and authority of this extraordinary group here could and should be a real influence on key decisions taken before, during and after COP15. The first issue is the need for urgency to tackle climate change. And in so many ways, we already are in the last chance saloon. Now, I mentioned last night about only having some 97 months left uh, in which to ensure greenhouse gas emissions reach their absolute peak. Otherwise, it may well be too late to stop temperatures rising beyond uh, dangerous levels. Those levels would, as you know better than I, render unbelievably large parts of the world uninhabitable and eventually lead to billions, yes, billions, of environmental refugees with all that that means for global security as sea levels rise and there is massive disruption to global food and freshwater supplies. The second area to be addressed was the way man interacts with nature, which is having a devastating impact on the planet. The second dimension, which I hope you might address, uh, is the uh, bigger picture of human interactions with nature. This obviously is an immense subject, but whilst uh, climate change is undoubtedly the greatest challenge of our age, it is far from being the only uh, global ecolo ecological challenge we face. It has been described as a threat multiplier, and in large part the threats that it multiplies are those which arise from our willful destruction of the ecosystems that provide the essential ecological services on which we all ultimately depend. Now, for what it is worth, I doubt if we can effectively tackle climate change without first ensuring that those ecosystem functions and services are protected. He also feels there needs to be an integrated solution to the problem of climate change. I believe the challenge for the scientific community today is to be at least as creative as it has uh, in the past, but to develop solutions that respect the boundaries defined by sustainability. For instance, there are huge opportunities for intelligent electricity distribution with decentralized pathways and energy produced close to where it is consumed. And this would maximize the potential for renewable energy and allow both heat and power from energy generation to be utilized. Designing ways to achieve this kind of thing at minimum cost will obviously be a major challenge, but perhaps a good deal more sensible than, than just geoengineering. He then outlined the third dimension of the memorandum, the need to reduce tropical deforestation. Solving climate change uh, is the precondition to ensuring security and without adequately addressing tropical deforestation, we cannot have an answer to climate change. It, it is that simple. Saving the rainforests is not an option. It is actually an absolute necessity. His Royal Highness believes that the memorandum endorsed by the world's leading scientific community should have a major influence on decisions at COP15, the Copenhagen Climate Change Summit, in December.